here, John Mitchell, and we're in the North End today to talk about the new trash and recycling program. And I have someone with me today who is prepared to answer lots of questions. We're lucky to have Marissa Perez Dormitzer, who is the recycling coordinator for the Great New Bedford Regional Refuse District. Uh, and Marissa, you've, uh, you've been hard uh, at work for a long time now on this project. Um, and I, I think the people are saying, well, we like these carts, they're pretty good, but how does it all work? So why don't you just, uh, if you would, just uh, tell us a little bit about what we're looking at, just the real basics, and then we can go into some of the questions that a lot of people have been asking us. Sure, definitely. So with the new program, there'll be a special new automated truck that will reach out and be able to grab these containers and empty them. And so this cart with the orange lid is for recycling and then the cart with the blue lid is for trash, and so residents will be receiving those soon, and so they'll each be getting their own set of containers. So these will replace uh, what we have today, which is everybody has their, their own trash barrels, they have the blue bins for recycling. Correct, and so starting the week of June 23rd, these are the carts that will be used. No bags or barrels or blue bins can be placed at the curb, just these carts. Okay, now, um, now, tell me a little bit. These things, uh, they have wheels. We just saw me wheel this up, um, and so they're pretty easy to use. They are. They are very easy to use. They come with nice hinge covers. That way, they'll keep everything inside the cart. You know, what, what are we looking at? We have, we have trash hanging out of the trash bin. Is that a problem? It is a problem. Uh, the lids ha actually have to be fully closed. And so in a proper set out, the lid would be closed fully, like the recycling cart here. Yeah. So, uh, so tell us, uh, tell us what we need to do with this one. Sure. Well, what you need to do is recycle more. There are a lot of things in there that could probably be recycled in this recycling cart, but also at the Shaman Avenue transfer station. Um, so you're saying I'm not recycling enough? Well, I'm saying we could do a little bit better. Okay. All right. So why don't we, uh, why don't, can we take a look and uh, see what uh, what we would do with these items? Sure. We can take a look. All right. Right. So we have a lot of different things in here. We have a juice bottle. Yep. We have paper towel roll. Yeah. Here I have some things that can be brought to the recycling center. This is called a rigid plastic, so that's something that could be brought to the recycling center on Shaman Avenue. Okay. So something like that shouldn't go in the recycling bin? Correct. It right. shouldn't go in the recycling bin. Okay. And then also, this is something that I think will take up a lot of room in trash carts, potentially, it's styrofoam. And so we do take styrofoam blocks at the Shaman Avenue transfer station and recycle them there. Okay. So bottom line is, styrofoam doesn't go in, in the recycling bin. Right. And it doesn't need to go in the trash either. Right. It can be recycled. All right. Yeah, but the idea is that if, uh, if somebody has, somebody can't get out to the recycling center, mm -hmm. you, can still, you can still throw out those types of things. We prefer that you would recycle yes. them, of course. Yes. But if you can't get out, make it out there to turn in a block of styrofoam, you can right. throw it out. You can, and what we recommend is that people accumulate a few items. You can use your old recycling bin and place some of these items in there, and when yeah. it's full, then you can take a trip to the recycling center. Yeah. So as you look through this, so we'll cut to the chase. Yeah. Now, we, we, it, it seems like there's a lot of stuff in there that could go in, in here, like plastic bottles, and yes. glass, and paper. Those are all things that can be recycled. Exactly. exactly. Now, what I, one of the things I, I see here is uh, you've got a trash bag in the trash, which makes sense, but there's no trash bag in the recycling bin. Is it, am I onto right. something? You are, you are, exactly. So the trash should be bagged. You can use any bags that you're using now. You don't need to use anything special. And then the recycling, just like you place it in the blue bin, you would place it loose in the recycling cart. We don't want any plastic bags in there because the bags jam the equipment at the recycling plant. Yeah. So there shouldn't be plastic bags in there. But the only exception is shredded paper. And so with shredded paper, we don't want it to blow around the city. And so that can be placed in a clear plastic bag or in a brown paper bag. All right, so the idea here is to contain that. We don't want that stuff blowing all over the place. Exactly. Um, so a lot of people have asked me, well, you know, what happens? So you're, the city's giving out these carts to all uh, single family homes and, and uh, two family homes. What happens um, if, people said, what happens if I fill up my trash barrel? 
Well, if you fill up your trash barrel, I mean, the first thing is we need to be recycling more. Yeah. I have a family of six people, including four kids and a baby in diapers, and we find that we generate two to three kitchen-sized bags of trash each week. Yeah. And so by recycling everything possible, everyone should be able to fit their trash in the trash cart provided. But if they do find that they don't have enough room, um, it can be held for the next week, um, or it can be also brought to New Bedford Waste Services, ABC's private facility. They can bring it there as well. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of um, so here's here's one question um, on that. You know, people might say, "Oh no, I I I, uh, I generate a lot more garbage than that." And um, the reality is that you can recycle almost everything these days. Yes. Exactly. There's so many things that I think that people are not aware of that yeah. can be recycled. One of the things in my home that we recycle a lot of is this plastic wrap, this kind of material. Um, this can actually be brought to the supermarket and recycled there. And they turn it into plastic lumber that's made into picnic tables and decks. And so this shouldn't go in the recycling and it doesn't need to go in the trash. And so you can bring it to the grocery store when you're going shopping. So it's very easy to do. Yeah, just another point. We're, we're not exactly the first community to, to have a system like this, right? Exactly. Many other cities and communities do that. Fall River has had this program for a few years now, and it's yeah. been going really well. It's yeah. helped to clean up the trash set outs. And they, have, they haven't had a problem with uh, people having not enough room in their barrels for all the trash. No, they, they haven't, right? because now people are in the habit yeah. of recycling everything that they can. Yeah, so it, it, that's I, what we're trying to do today is demystify this whole process. There are lots, I mean, as much as we in New Bedford want to be leaders and everything, we're not exactly leading in this. We're, there are other communities that have been doing it for a while, and we're learning from their mistakes. They've, they've uh, uh, and we're benefiting from it. Exactly. So it's pretty straight, it, it should be pretty straightforward after yes. this transition period. A uh, couple of other questions. So people have asked me, what do we do with those blue bins? The blue sure. recycling bins we have now. Yep, so the blue bins, what we're recommending is that residents keep their blue bins and they can use them, they could set them in a convenient spot, maybe in a closet or just inside the garage or on the porch, and then they can fill them up. And then when they're full, they can bring them outside to the big carts. That yeah. way it makes it a little more convenient for them. But if a resident doesn't have a need for the blue bins anymore, they can be recycled at the Shaman Avenue transfer station. Okay. Uh, another question, so what do I do with my old trash barrels? Sure, similar thing. Um, they can be used for yard waste, so the yard waste program isn't changing, and so residents can use them for that, or if they don't have a use for the old trash barrels, they can be brought to the transfer station as well. Um, well, that, so that, that makes a lot of sense. So we still will have the same cycle of yard waste pickup, leaves and, and uh, lawn exactly. cuttings that uh, the day after trash day everywhere through the city, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, that won't change. Good. What happens if my cart's stolen? What, what do I do then? Sure, great question. And so the first thing is when, um, when you receive your carts, they do have this white strip on the side. Yep. And so we recommend that you write your address on them right away. You can use permanent marker. Yep. And then the other thing, on the front of the cart, you'll see there's a serial number. And so each cart has its own serial number, and that will be noted when the carts are delivered. And then the last thing, which I think is the neatest thing, um, they have an RFID chip embedded in them. It's a radio frequency tag. Yeah. And so you'll notice when they're delivering the carts, they scan them. And so they're scanning the longitude and latitude of where they're dropped off. And so if then this cart is found somewhere in the south end, um, the, it'll be noted because yeah. every time ABC disposal passes by every week, they scan the cart again. And so then it will be flagged if they find this cart somewhere in the south end or somewhere else. And we could catch the crooks that way. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, let me ask one other thing. Um, and this, is the, this, I think, is the big question. Why are we doing all this? Sure, great question. And there are three main reasons. The first one is to clean up litter in the city. By containing the trash, we're now going to eliminate the problem of seagulls and creatures tearing open the bags and, and causing litter. And so that is really a big thing. I was very impressed in Fall River by the setouts. They're all so neat and uniform. Yeah, and, and one of the big, um, just uh, not to interrupt, but one, uh, the, the trash, most of the trash that people see on the streets doesn't come from people throwing trash out of their car windows. It comes from trash being uh, ripped open either by seagulls or just uh, trash that has not been properly laid out. It's blowing away on a, on a windy day, especially in the mm -hmm. winter time. 
and after all the snow melts you, you see in the springtime trash and uh, all over the place this is going to help because you you put the cover down exactly. it's heavy plastic it stays there it contains the trash the city becomes neater. Exactly, exactly. So that's one really so you said positive you have two point. Two other reasons. Yes. So um, the other reason is to increase recycling because now with single stream recycling, it'll make recycling so much easier. Residents just need to put the bottles and the paper all in this one cart and they'll have a lot more room than the blue bins that we're using now. Mm -hmm. And so it has been shown that this kind of program increases recycling. And then the last thing is that it will decrease the amount of trash that we're sending to the Crapo Hill landfill. The landfill is estimated to have about 17 years of life left, but by recycling as much as we can, we can extend the life of the landfill. Because as recycling, yes. recycling goes up, the amount of trash goes down, exactly. the less trash goes into the landfill, the longer the landfill lasts, yes. the longer we can forego having to buy another big piece of property to right. use as a landfill. Correct. Right. It yeah. saves the, the, the city money in the so long it run. It saves yes. the city money. Yes. We're all exactly. about that. Yes. Um, well, that's great. Um, so, I mean, you have done such a, a wonderful job uh, working through this. I know it's a big process. We have a city of 100,000 people. Uh, there are lots of carts obviously being distributed. Um, great work uh, also by um, uh, the Department of uh, Facilities and Fleet Management. Ken Blanchard's the director. They are really managing this program. If people have questions, there's a number to call. There right? is, there is. You so would call us. Ken Blanchard's department at yeah. uh, Facilities and Fleet Management, and it's at 508 961 3008. And we also have a lot of information posted on the city's website. Yep. That's at www.newbedford-ma.gov. And also I'm posting updates on the New Bedford Recycling Facebook page. So there's right, a lot so of there's information. Lots of information. Yes. And so it's a big, it's a change. Uh, people, you know, I, people have to get used to the, the new way, but it's really, it's really going to make things a lot easier in the long run. It is. Yeah. It right, tell is. us that yes. number again so sure. everybody hears it. Sure, it's 508-961-3008. Well, that's great, Marissa. Well, thanks so much for all of your hard work on this. And, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I have a, I have a telephone call. Hold on oh, one second. Oh, okay. Yep. It's my grandmother. She says she has two things for me. The first is, Get off of my lawn. <laughs> so lawn. Uh-oh. And then she also, she also says that she's got questions about uh, the new program. So we're going to have to go inside and, uh, and answer those questions. Sounds else good. I'm going to hear it from her later. All right. Great. All right, we'll be right in. All right, let's go. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so, so let me ask you, uh, so what do you think about this new recycling program? I think it's wonderful. All right, that's the right answer. Yes, it's wonderful because people know what, the, what belongs in each bin. Right. And it, it's, it isn't a mistake. Right. So, let, so you have some questions uh, about uh, things that uh, can be recycled, right? Yes. All right, so tell us, uh, tell us what your questions well, are. Well, I have some recycling items here. This is a one that you would recycle. Right, That'll be, that's, that can be recycled. Now this is paper. That can be recycled too. Oh, that can be recycled. Yes. I, I didn't know this would be. So that can be recycled, that magazine. All, All right. right. Yeah. Thank you. And this can what, be... What about that one? Oh, oh. That's yeah. a good one. That, that can be recycled. Yeah, yeah, that can be recycled. Now, the can, you know that you can't throw that with the uh, in the garbage. That would be wrong. Yes. So you put that in there. That should be recycled. You're on it, yes. And this is a bottle. We have to recycle that, too. Yep. Before you do any more... I hope you uh, understand that you've got to look at every item you put in so that it doesn't confuse the pickup. That's right. Well, don't throw that in the recycling. That's got, that that's going goes in the, in the garbage. Give me that. This can go in the... That, that's recyclable. That is. It's it wax is. covered. It's a yeah, recycled. that can be recycled. It's going to confuse a lot of people. And this is recycling. 
Definitely. Well, it shouldn't confuse anybody because we're we're setting the record straight right now. We're we're clarifying a lot of the questions uh, that people have, or answering a lot of questions yeah. that people have about it. All right. Do you have anything else? Yes. Just this. Shall I throw it out? Recyclable. Really. So there are certain rules when it comes to this new CART program, and one of the big ones is that the lid has to be fully closed. And so there will be enforcement, and first there'll be warnings issued, and then fines um, for repeat offenders. But one main thing is that the lid has to be fully closed. This is an improper set out, as you can see with the, the lid and the things on the ground. And so also there should be no bags or blue bins or trash barrels next to the cart starting the week of June 23rd. Again, because there will be fines issued um, when that begins. So I, I hope today's commercial uh, clarified for a lot of people the, uh, the questions they had uh, in mind uh, when they first heard about this new program. Um, it's going to take a, a little while uh, to pass out all the bins. Uh, the city is distributing some 56,000 bins over the next few weeks. Uh, if you haven't gotten yours yet, you will soon. Uh, but keep in mind, this is, a, this is a big change in the way we've done things. But know that this is a, a, a process, uh, an approach to trash collection and recycling that has been very successful in other communities, including many right around us here. And so uh, what we're doing here in New Bedford is benefiting from both their mistakes and their successes in, in putting together uh, uh, our own program. So uh, I look forward to, um, uh, to seeing it rolled out. It'll start the week of June 23rd. So keep that in mind. The week of June 23rd will be the first week when this goes live. Uh, and I, I don't expect that we've answered every question today. What I encourage people to do is to call the number that Marissa gave you earlier in the program uh, to clarify uh, any, uh, any of your, uh, any misconception, uh, answer any question that you have in mind. We want to make sure that this gets, uh, gets up and running as quickly as possible uh, with as little disruption as possible so that uh, we can have cleaner streets and save the city some tax money in the long run. That's what we're, what we're trying to do here. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, keep asking questions so that we can have a successful rollout of this program, and let's keep recycling.